What's up guys, this is Michael here and I'm coming to you today to review the upcoming title SNK Heroines Tag Team Frenzy for the PlayStation 4. Now, me personally, I've been waiting for this game for quite a while. I've been always really interested and always had a love for um, fighting game female characters. And I thought that this game would definitely be able to satiate my love of them, having them all in one game to have fun with. I will say that this game definitely has some issues. It's not perfect in any way possible, but it does have a lot of things about it that's good. And I also think that a lot of things about this are really positive. I think there are quite a few improvements about this game that from KOF to this game. Now, this definitely has some um, tonal issues, and I'm pretty sure there's a big elephant in the room about the sexualization of these characters and whatnot. And there's a conversation to be had about that as well. And I think that this is a, probably the perfect time to discuss this because this game does present this as a central point of the storyline and the character interactions that you have in this game. But first, to give you an overview of what the story is, I'm going to let Kukri take it over. <laughs> <laughs> これをご覧のクズどもに俺様が何をやっているか説明しておこう。この邪神像は力を再び売ることで精神世界から現実世界に復活を遂げるその<笑> So yeah, that's generally the storyline for this game. Um, Kukri is this creep who uses his cool desert magic whatever powers to create a pocket dimension and, and like capture all these female characters into one place. They have them pretty much fight each other for whatever reason he thinks. And by doing so, he wants them to all like get fearful and you know get despair and get down and depressed and use that energy to, I guess, even fuel his pocket dimension even further so he could break to break through to the real world. And that story, I mean, what do you, I mean, what do you can say about that? I mean, it's pretty odd. I mean, I think that it wasn't supposed to be a storyline with completely fleshed out and this pretty nuanced thing. I mean, it's just a really just a. I think it's just a way to explain why they're all here and why they're fighting. The one thing I didn't like was the fact they didn't really explain why Terry was transformed into a woman for some reason. It just so it just happened and kind of like everybody just accepted it for the most part. But Kukri himself is probably the most weird character ever. Won't you? ここまでは予定通り。残り 2人 know what to say about that. When I saw that scene, I was like, "What in God's name is happening to this game?" Kukri is probably the kookiest, craziest, most incel villain I've ever seen in a fighting game. But for some reason, I'm not exactly that upset about it. I think that he kind of represents the the really like underbelly of gamers as far as like the ones who like don't really go out much. He's pretty much like the the quintessential like stay in, shut in gamer guy who like fantasizes women and all that good stuff. And uh I don't hate it at all, and I think that the way this game presents female characters, and a lot of them are pretty much like, hey, this isn't cool, you pervert, why are you being a pervert, stop being a pervert, why are we wearing these stupid outfits, and I love the fact that the characters of the game retain their own personalities, and they're pretty, like, self-aware, this is kind of shitty that this is happening, so I do agree, I do like the fact that the game was somewhat self-aware in what's going on, it's not just like this big, you know, yeah, it's just not this big boob fest. I mean, yeah, it still is, but at least at the same time, within the storyline, the context, the women actually know that this is kind of shitty, and they're trying to like stop him. So, again, for that, I do applaud SNK for doing that because they could have just easily done like the DOA route and just said, "Oh, they're just here to be girls and whatnot," and just for our oogleingization. I mean, yeah, guys are gonna oogle all the girls in this game. That's pretty much the thing. 
Now, I want to talk about who this game is going to be marketed to. Like, I'm a little confused by this because it's not exactly the most... It's a super casual fighting game, and I'll explain that when I talk about the mechanics and whatnot. I mean, it's not exactly the most difficult game to play at all. And but at the same time, if they're trying to attract, I guess, more casual gamers and probably more female gamers, this wasn't the tactic to do because this is the identification can only go so far. And I think there is a market for it. I think that some women don't really care, but there there is a, a portion of women who do care about this type of thing. And if they were definitely trying to attract them, that's definitely going to be the thing that kind of doesn't want to, that'd probably be the reason why people don't play this, honestly, because it's really lewd in a lot of ways. And it's just like over the top with the sexualization. I mean, the boob physics, the butts. I mean, it's just, it's a lot for some people. And I can see why Like I, for me personally, I didn't really find it to be too bad. I mean, as compared to other games, this is pretty tame, to be honest. But yeah, it's very casual, but at the same time, it's like not really appealing to females. I think like it's a weird type of like mixture of what they were trying to go for as far as what this game is about. And I don't really know who the audience is for this game. I mean, it might be a very specific male gamer who's like not really good at fighting games, but wants to oogle at girls. Or it could be like the female gamer who doesn't really care, just wants to play around with sexy females. Maybe. I don't know. It's kind of weird. It's definitely very, um, it's a game that's not for everybody. So yeah, I'll just say that I did enjoy playing it and I'll go into like the gameplay right now. And the gameplay is pretty simple. You got like three different attack buttons. You have your, um, light, your medium and your heavy attack. And you have like, a, um, your block button there is no crouching or low attacks all the attacks in the game are mid and high so there's not a lot of like high low mix-ups and stuff like that it's pretty much a very straightforward as far as like the gameplay is concerned i mean they do have really complex combos that you can start learning later on but it don't really take that long to get up and running like i may have started playing maybe like five minutes again i pretty much knew exactly what to do um, as far as like combos or whatnot, and it's one, not one of those games where you're gonna have to need to learn a whole bunch of like you know inputs and all the inputs are really simple. Like a lot of the inputs like down circle or down um you know um yeah a lot of them are like down circle or uh, forward circle or back circle or there are a couple of down attacks but they still don't crouch though which is kind of weird. And the block button didn't throw me off at first. It's actually like the evasive button too. You do have an evasive roll. And for the super moves, you only got like two super moves. And in order to win a match, you have to hit them with a super when their life is red. So it's kind of weird in a way, but it works too. I don't know. It's a very strange game, to be honest. Um, also, the game has like these crazy items that's thrown in the mix too. So it kind of presents another layer of like craziness because you get all these crazy items that do all these weird things and stuff. Kind of like Smash Brothers or more so like pocket fire this game definitely has like this pocket fires vibe where it's like it's not meant to be super competitive or super complex it's meant to be a really fun and straight to the point type of game and i do enjoy that aspect also uh i can't not like talk about the online the online for this game is just as bad as any other kof game i've played in the past like it's just uh it was really sluggish and it was i mean the interface to get to a match is pretty simple and straightforward but actually playing the match was like awful it was super laggy and both the people that um, person i was playing had a pretty good connection too so it was not necessarily because of the connection we had it was definitely because i guess maybe whatever netcode they're using is still not up to par for online play i don't know it's just weird that sk has a really gotten better with their net codes for any of their games though it's kind of disheartening and that might be a reason people don't want to play it i know this game's on the switch and the switch doesn't have um a way to do wire connections so that's going to definitely be another issue trying to play this online on the switch well maybe not who knows i haven't played the switch version of this because the switch version is a little bit underwhelming as far as like frame rate issues and stuff like that so definitely will stick to the ps4 version for this but yeah the online is ugh, at least a lot to be desired to be honest now we're going to talk about the customization which was a big factor when they were marketing this game Unfortunately, this is where the game, part of the game that I didn't like that much because the customizations are really like slim pickings. Like you can't really do a lot as far as like customizing. You really only can just add accessories to the characters. So it was kind of a letdown in that department. I really wanted to go in and like create my own crazy costumes and outfits for the girls. But pretty much you get like three base costumes. You can just like add accessories and stuff to it. 
and uh, I was a little let down by that. I kind of wanted to really go and make my own costumes for them, and I was hoping that would be the case for this game, but that's definitely not what we're presented with. You definitely just have just a few tweaks you can do here and there, and yeah, it's not a whole lot. Like You don't really get like these crazy, robust costumes like other games like Tekken and stuff like that. Like You're pretty much just adding stuff. You're just throwing on a little adornments here and there to make them a little unique for your personal taste but not enough to where it's like a full-on like costume change i do appreciate the fact that a lot of costumes in the game are pretty fleshed out except that some of them are just really bad like some of the costumes are just like awful like not even just the fact they're lewd some of them are just bad just because of the like design choices they made for some of the costumes they could have definitely done a lot better with that but overall, the way the game looks is really pretty. Like, coming from KOF um, 14, even after the um, patch update to improve the graphics for the game, this game is definitely a huge step forward as far as graphics and animations and stuff like that. And I'm glad they're able to go to that level of, you know, trying to do better as far as graphics. Because that's always been a concern about KOF 14 was the graphics because people were really harping on that for a while. And I'm glad to see they actually did, you know, update their engine just a slight bit. I mean, it's not like a big graphical overhaul, but you can definitely see there's a huge improvement over the previous game. <clears throat> Even in the cutscenes, you definitely can tell how the game looks and moves is a lot more fluid than KOF um, 14, which I thought was pretty great for them. I mean, I'm not going to say that this game is, like, on par with a lot of other fighters that's out graphically, but at least they tried. I mean, I give them an A for effort for at least improving what they already had. Um, Yeah, the customization was kind of a letdown. I really wanted to, like, really go in and just, like, create some really crazy kooky costumes for the girls, and you really just can't do it. You're just really just throwing stuff on them, and that was a little disheartening, so... Yeah, I would hope if they ever do another game like this, I hope they actually give, allow you to customize them a lot more. But yeah, that's pretty much this, the gist of it. Um, a lot of the game, um, you have, let's see, as far as modes are concerned, you have arcade mode, you have survival mode, you have a tutorial mode, which is pretty good. It gives you a good idea of all the mechanics for the game. Um, you have online, of course. You have the, um, of course, customization mode. And yeah, there's a lot of um, single-player content. I think that... The arcade mode is probably one of the better arcade modes I've played over the last few years. Um, it does give you endings for all the characters, and it gives you, like, intros for all the characters, too. And there's so many combinations of, like, teams you can put together that it makes you want to go back and play it over again just to see, at least just to see the opening and how the characters interact with each other. I think that was pretty clever and, and honestly, one of the better implementations of this game because KOF 14... One of my issues was the fact that the arcade mode was so boring and lackluster in comparison to uh, KOF 13's really robust um, arcade mode. And I feel like this kind of went back to the way they did things in 13 with having like a lot of character interactions and a lot of like dialogue and stuff for like the intros and the little cutscenes in between. And I thought that was really fascinating. Even in the character index, even though they're all just like jpegs pretty much it still gives you an idea of where the character is going after this whole event's over and i did find it to be really satisfying to be beating this game and completing it and whatnot and overall my experience with the game is pretty favorable like, i honestly had a great time playing this i'm still interested in seeing what other like teams i can put together i, I didn't mention the tag feature earlier on um, the tag feature is definitely is very reminiscent of Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite is very fluid and very, like, free-forming for the most part. I mean, you do have instances where you can't tag in, but it's pretty free-forming as far as, like, you can really go in and, like, make some really cool combos with the tag feature. And I did enjoy that a lot. I actually hope they do another tag game in general in the future for KOF. I know traditionally KOF has been a 3v3 game, but 2v2, 2v2 does work really well. And I think this might be a good um, direction for them to go in for the future. Huh, but yeah, I really enjoyed this game, actually, surprisingly enough. I may be one of the few people out here who just took this game as face value. Like, I understand that the justification of these women is kind of, like, overdone in a way. But I like the fact that they were very um, savvy enough to say, okay, we're going to actually address this within the game's context. So it makes sense that it's not just like we're just throwing characters and putting them with booby dresses and having their butts out just for the sake of having their butts out. Like, they literally have a purpose for doing it. So I applaud okay for doing that. 
All right, I've talked enough about this game. What do you guys think? Are you going to pick up SNK Heroines? Do you think it's a good game? Are you just completely turned off by the lootness? Are you actually going to buy it because of the lootness? Let me know in the comments below. Please like, subscribe, and share this video with all your friends and people you know who might like this game. And yeah, thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you next time.